Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. In this video I want to show you three steps that you could take that will help you dial in like a tone for math rock or styles of emo that are often associated with math rock. And uh, we're going to try and get that kind of you know, twinkly, spanky kind of tone. Um, you know, something like this. <laughs> So I just want to say quickly before I get into it a bit more that this is obviously my own point of view, my own subjective pers perspective of uh, what a good tone is for math rock. But I've had quite a few people uh, comment on the commonly used chords video, uh, you know, in math rock and emo styles saying that they really liked that tone and they w I got a bunch of questions asking how I get that tone. So that's what I thought I'll address uh, in this video, as well as helping you obviously get that desired sound that you have in your head. So step one, uh, get the right guitar. And I've put in brackets here, preferably um, a Telecaster, uh, but you don't have to get a Telecaster, of course. But what I mean by this is, uh, you know, you can be buying guitars just because somebody else has that guitar or, you know, you think this guitar is going to give you the sound you want. So what's quite important is to, you know, obviously do a bit of research online and actually uh, go into a store and try out some guitars as well. Because you might find, uh, well, a perfect example of, of this is when I bought this guitar, uh, I wanted to get either a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. And I went down to the uh, music shop in uh, Busan, in, um, I'm living in South Korea if you didn't know already. And whilst I was down there, um, you know, I picked up the Strat that I was looking to get. And they didn't have the telly I wanted to try, but they had the, this is American special Telecaster. And I had this one in um, a sunburst colour, but well, that's irrelevant anyway. But I tried the Strat and you know, I was thinking I'd really like it, but I didn't actually like it that much. And then I picked up this to try as like a reference and I really liked this guitar. So I ended up buying this. And um, before I had this guitar, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I started off with uh, a PRS SE single cut. Um, that guitar, I, I did the, I swapped out the pickups myself. You know, I did all of the uh, soldering with the wires and stuff. and. I thought, well, you know, this sounds really nice, very spanky kind of tone. And I used that guitar on the record uh, Tenses by my band Mountains. And I had a Mesa Boogie, uh, was it Siletto Ace, or whatever it's called, but it was such a nice sounding amp. And it was, the guitar was sounding great. And uh, yeah, I loved that. And then I, uh, one day the neck pickup stopped working. So I took it down to the local shop and he, he opened it up, the, you know, the Korean dude who worked there. And he was just like, you know, looking at it in, in, in shock. <laughs> and he's just like, what have you done? And he's like, the way you started it is it's like a single coil sound. It's not a humbucker sound. It, it, sorry, I should have said it's two humbuckers in this guitar, but you probably saw that from the, the picture, sorry. And uh, yeah, so then he wired it up properly. And then I was playing it and I was like, no, oh, now it doesn't sound as quite as magical as it did before. So yeah, so that was like, obviously there, so I want a single coil kind of sound, right? And then I got an SG after that, which is two humbuckers, but it had coil tapping, coil split, uh, push-pull ability, and I always used it in the coil tap mode. So I, again, I was thinking, why have I got this guitar when, you know, all I'm doing is playing it with a single coil mode anyway, so I sold that, and then I got this, and I've been happy with this you know, ever since then, and it's, there's a reason for it, why? It, it, you know, it's used on all of our favorite math rock records and, you know, Midwest emo and just any kind of emo style of uh, records, right? And when I played with my band in Japan, we played with like Pens Plus and Lokto and a few other Japanese bands and, you know, it was a sea of Telecasters. Everybody had Telecasters, so. So if you uh, haven't bought a guitar yet or you're looking to buy a new guitar uh, to try out some new kind of tones, and if you're going to go for a Telecaster, uh, I highly recommend getting the Squire Af Affinity Telecaster. That's a really good beginner's guitar as well if you're looking for a beginner's guitar. And it's a good way to try and, you know, test out that Tele kind of sound of that. Out without having to, you know, pay too much money, right? So, uh, get yourself one of those if you're interested in getting a telly. And then, if you do like that, 
then obviously you can go out and spend a bit more money and get a Mexican made one or you know an American made one depending on what budget you have and um, I'll throw a link down in a description for that and that'll be an Amazon link so if you do end up purchasing it through that that gets a small commission to me which obviously helps support this channel and that's one way you can support and for every other piece of gear that I mention in this video I'll do the same thing and I'll offer um a cheaper, a, a more affordable alternative to, obviously it's good to test out these things instead of, you know, buying the most expensive thing first, right? So that's step one. And step two is quite another simple one, but there's actually quite a lot of depth to it, is get the right amp. And I've put in brackets a Fender style amp, uh, preferably, you know, the black, blackface style uh, of Fender amps. You'll hear the Fender clean style uh, tones quite a lot on a lot of MAV records and emo records, you know, throughout the decades. And there's a good reason why I think this sounds good with a Telecaster, because uh, notoriously Fender, these, the Fender clean sound is, is quite, you know, slightly mid-scooped. And when you're playing a Telecaster with the pickup position in the middle, like I do and many other artists do, it has this kind of this mid-hump and it just, you know, fills out, it complements the amp very well. Uh, so the kind of setup I've got, if you're interested, is uh, behind me here, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I got Yamaha THR 100HD head. This is a digital modeling amplifier, and it's got um, you know clean crunch lead and modern uh, channels. And I've got it on the clean channel, which is um, based on a, a Fender style clean amp. And um, I'm actually running in stereo, um, having a bit of fun with that. And my second amp, I should say there actually is no speaker involved, sorry, it's all amp simulation. So there's a DI coming out the back into the um, interface here. And then I got speaker emulation running in this program here. So you can do the all kinds of different speaker simulation. And the second amp is down here on my pedal board, believe it or not. Um, again, it's speaker simulation. So this is my preamp, so the preamp section of an amplifier. And then this one, the Nooks New X Solid Studio, is a uh, power amp section and speaker mic cab uh, simulation pedal. So this runs into this, and then this is coming out the DI here into the uh, audio interface again. And this one I've got set to a jazz chorus uh, speaker cabinet, and it's mic'd up with a mic here. And then I've, yeah, I've got the amp and the cab sim on, as you can see here. And then you just work out different tubes and stuff. Ah, jeez, that's heavy. Uh, yeah. And then that's what you're hearing on the, in the right headphone. And the left headphone is this uh, Yamaha here, which sounds really fantastic. So I've got no actual um, real speaker sounds going on. So I'm not miking any cabs. It's all... Uh, simulated, so it kind of gives you that kind of studio sound, which I really like. And so I've got one set as a Fender sound, and then the other one is a Roland Jazz Chorus sound, it's just so they, you know, give slightly different coloration of tone. Because if I had two Fender sounds, it doesn't sound quite as nice as mixing two amps up, in my opinion. Uh, so if you're looking for, obviously, um, what kind of amps you want to use, uh, a good place I recommend starting if you if you're on quite a budget is try out a Yamaha THR. Uh, THR10, which is the the combo version of this, and it's a wicked little lamp, and it's got same kind of things, you know, clean, crunch, lead, and modern, and basically it's a Fender, a Vox, a Marshall, and a Mesa Boogie. So you got the, um, you know, you can try out the different kind of amp models there, so you can see if like, oh, I, I, I kind of like the Marshall sound more than this sound, so maybe I should go out and get a Marshall amp as, you know, my next amp, or, you know, I like the more modern sound, so maybe I should look at looking at the more modern sounding kind of amps. And you can also try out the THR10C, which is um, a valve modeling amplifier by Yamaha, and again, that one, you can try out different valve kind of styles, so that's a great way to uh, start out uh, looking at different kind of amps without having to spend too much money and also they all have direct recording capabilities as well like this so you can get a really nice sound just from <clears throat> plugging directly into your PC and the last step is the icing on the cake is sculpting your sound so you got your guitar you got your amp and then now we're going to alter the sound by either using pedals uh, the guitar itself with the you know different pickup selection and the volume and tone knob 
or you can obviously mess around with the, the amp tone itself. So what I do first is I get the, you know, the bass sound. So I was going to put my headphones on so I can hear what's going on. So first thing you want to do is obviously set the uh, sound on your amp so you're kind of happy with it. And so I'm running stereo, so I've turned off the reverb on both amp, well, on that amp anyway, and then I'm going to use the reverb pedal here in a bit. But first, we've got like my bass tone. It's quite um, an undesirable sound. I'm sorry about the ringing noise you're getting, it's because the pedals are close to the PC. And I've got single coils, of course, it doesn't help, so <clears throat> it's better with me, I'll, I'll edit that out best I can. And so now I've got that, so like, as I said, I'm thinking of this section as like the icing on top of the cake, so like the last 10, or like 15 to 10% of your sound. Uh, so I kind of like that sound, but it hasn't got that much punch to it, it's not that inspiring. So i got the Arrows preamp boost pedal here, so if i got that one in, click that one in. It already has a bit more kick to it, right? And what this basically does is it tightens up the low ends, adds a bit of mid, and it adds a little sparkle to the highs, so I really like that. And then what I do on top of that is I bring in a compression pedal, just to tighten up a little bit. It sounds incredibly dry, right? So this is where you start to need to think about reverbs and delays and modulation. So what I do is my always on sound, I should say my bass sound, is the arrows here, um, the compression, and then on the second channel here, I've got chorus and reverb. So then that, it thickens up the sound a bit. <laughs> much better already, right? A bit more inspiring to play. And if you want to add a bit of drive, a kick, I've got the Il Torino Overdrive here. So basically I'm just gain stacking, so you can think about that. So you've got my bass always on sound is the arrows, compression, reverb and chorus. So again I'll offer links for these in the description, but also I'll put like a alternative, you know, more affordable ones if you're just interested in you know, trying out some sounds. <laughs> So like I said, just basically gain stacking there. So it was really nice that this on top, really chewy and thick, right? And then uh, I've got these in the wrong order. I should have the reverb after in the loop because it makes it go crazy. But I've got <laughs> uh, this Dynadrive by Boss pedal. Um, the Boss pedal, sorry, it's, 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 it doesn't sound that great, but it sounds exactly like uh, one of my favorite albums.
album that is, it's uh, Conan Cambria in Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth. Something, something, something. Anyway, but yeah, it's just lovely, chewy, digital <laughs> overdrive sound, right? <laughs> 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 bit for the tree. <laughs> yeah, but enough of that one. Um, so yeah, that is the first step here. And I, I forgot to mention how I actually split the amplifiers here is with this JHS, JHS uh, buffer splitter. Fantastic little thing because it's going to, you know, end of your chain, it's buffering your signal. And if you know about this, you're not losing any uh, high ends basically with this at the end. Um, so everything comes in here and then it's going out. This one goes into the Yamaha and then this one is going up into the, the Vox here and going into the Solid Studio and coming out the DI here. So that's uh, my icing on the cake, so to speak, you know, my always on sound. So you can look for something like this and uh, yeah, uh, try out some different pedals. I, re I highly recommend getting some kind of, um, you know, preamp kind of booster or, you know, a colouring pedal, something, you know, with EQ on it, so you can, it's obviously going to help um, in some cases where you feel like the tone's a bit too flat. And uh, like I said, uh, try out some uh, cheaper alternatives, uh, try out some more affordable alternatives at first uh, to see, for example, you know, I highly recommend getting a compressor, but, you know, they can be very expensive. Um, this one here, the new X one is uh, this was about sixty dollars. So it's cheaper than the Boss one, and it's got this option to bring in your blend your clean signal back in, which sounds quite nice as well. But highly recommend Boss pedals as well if you've not tried out any pedals before. They're very affordable and they give you a decent sound, and they're very rugged and built uh, to last basically. And they, they keep their price if you you know want to sell them and upgrade them as well, which is great. Um, yeah, so please leave any questions down below about any of the stuff I'm using and also what I want to know is what guitar you're using, what amp you're using and what pedals you're using to sculpt your sound. So basically what is your rig and we can have a conversation about that. I'm very interested to see what everyone else is using and what your opinions are on like my setup and uh, what you think is a good setup to get that you know desired kind of math rock kind of sound. And as always, uh, I want to say thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, you guys, are seriously awesome. Um, you know, you're giving me uh, the, some income to to do this kind of thing. And um, if you are looking to support the channel, you can become a patron. There's a link down in the description for that. And also I have merchandise available. <laughs> I have this new logo I designed recently. Um, I've ordered myself one, but I gotta wait for it to come to South Korea, so it might be a few weeks. And I've got other kinds of shirts as well. Um, so if, if you're interested in one of them, that would be great. And I do have Instagram and Facebook as well. You can find links for them down below. And if you're interested in my band Mountains, then there'll be links down below for that as well. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.